Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here. Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be the continuation of the Ezekiel commentary series. So let's go to chapter 4. All right, so let's read Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 1. Thou also, son of man, take thee a tile, you know, like tile and carpet, right? And lay it before thee and portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem. So I guess he's supposed to make a uh, representative model of Jerusalem here. Verse 2. And lay siege against it, and build a fort against it, and cast a mount against it. Set the camp also against it, and set battering rams against it round about. Well, this is what the Babylonians did. They went to uh, Jerusalem, and they built a fort, and a mount, and a camp, and battering rams. And then what did they do? They besieged the city. Verse 3. Moreover, thou, uh, moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan, and set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city, and set thy face against it, and it shall be besieged, and thou shalt lay siege against it. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Verse 4. Lie thou also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of days that thou shalt lie upon it, thou shalt bear their iniquity. So, he's supposed to lay on his left side. Keep that in mind, left side. Verse 5. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of the days, 390 days. So shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. So the left side was for Israel. And the right side was for Judah. Well, what's up with that, Chaplain Bob? Well, best I can figure, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man, talking about Christ, Christ had a dual nature. He was the Son of Man and he was the Son of God. He was God clothed in human flesh. The only one that ever did that. He called himself the Son of Man. Verse 31, Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory with all the holy angels. You know, if there's holy angels, there's unholy angels. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. I think that's what these, um, these shots are going to do, these jabs in the arm. I think they're going to separate the sheep from the goats. 
verse 33. And he, Jesus, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Now, isn't it funny that Satan's uh, symbol, you know, Baphomet, is symbolized with a goat? I've seen a lot of pentagrams with a goat. You know, the two horns poking up and the sideburns on the side and then the cheek going down. Five-pointed pentagram. You know, is it a coincidence that the uh, Satanists choose a goat for their uh, symbol? Not a chance. But he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left. Now remember, Israel was on the left and Judah was on the right. We're going to cover that in a minute. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, and this is where you want to be, people, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Uh, if you don't think works are important in your Christian walk, May I strongly recommend that you read the book of James, chapter 2. People that think, oh, works don't matter. Yes, they do. Verse 37. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when... Saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Oh boy, the goats, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You see, hell wasn't created for mankind. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. But hey, if you want to follow the devil and his angels, um, you can follow them right into the everlasting fire. Verse 42. For I was in hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also say, uh, also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Go knock on John Haggy's door, or uh, Franklin Graham, Billy Graham, Billy Goat Graham's son, or uh, Benny Hinn, or uh, Joel Osteen. Tell them you haven't eaten in a couple days and see if they'll make you a sandwich. Oh, wait, you can't because they got gated walls and bodyguards and you wouldn't even get, you wouldn't even make it to the front door. Yeah. Yeah, if you think works don't matter, you know, and then people will say, well, you're trying to earn your salvation by doing good works. 
No. Apple trees do not produce apples to become an apple tree. Apple trees produce apples because they are apple trees. And good works should follow faith and salvation. Read James chapter 2. Strongly recommend it. Very important. Matter of fact, James chapter 1 and verse and chapter 2. Very, very important. I call it the book of daily living. And uh, you know who James's father was? A guy named Joseph. You know who his mother was? A gal named Mary. Guess who he grew up with his whole life? Yeah, a guy named Jesus. I think James knew a couple of things. What do you What do you say? What do you say? Now, why did the Lord tell Ezekiel to lay on his left side for Israel, but then on his right side for Judah? And yeah, I know, you talk to a demon nominational church and they'll say, oh yeah, well, Israel, Judah, they're all Jews. It don't matter, you know, they're all the same thing. No, they're not. Uh... One thing I've learned, if you go to a church, never talk to the pastor alone. Always bring up questions in a Bible study group. Ha ha ha. Because if you catch them alone, uh, they'll, they'll lie. And they'll kick you out in private. Because they're a bunch of devils for the most part. You know, but if you catch them in a group... Um, and ask them questions that uh, their theology won't let them answer honestly. They'll change the subject or lie or whatever. Um, I know their method of operation, their MO. I know it quite well. That's why I gave up. I gave up looking for a church. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 3, verse 1. Now, I did a study on this. I did a commentary on the book of Jeremiah and Isaiah. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife, you know, divorce, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou, but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. What's a harlot? A whore. It's one of those twenty-dollar English old uh, old English words. It means a whore, you know. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Now, the Lord's talking about Israel here. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places. You know, the Bible's always talking about false worship on high places. And guess what, people? Whether you go to China or Egypt or uh, Mexico or South America, Central America, what do you find? What do you find? You find pyramids. You think those people built those pyramids for nothing? No, they were places of worship. Do you know the largest pyramid in the world is located in China? Oh, yeah. They didn't discover it until World War II when a cargo plane or a military plane was flying over the thing, uh, over the over the pyramid, it's kind of, I think it's in a desert type environment. And uh, they started, they wanted to uh, take a look at it after the war. But uh, it wasn't long after that the communists took over and they will not allow access to it. 
But you look at it, all the pyramids, they're places of worship. They were the high places, just like the Tower of Babel or Babel. You know, they were building the tower to heaven. They were building that stairway to heaven to rip off a Led Zeppelin song. Verse 2, lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lying with. Oh, yeah. You were sleeping around on, at the high places. In the waste hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. Thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden. Rain showers. And there hath been no latter rain. And thou hadst a, fo a whore's forehead thou refusest to be ashamed wilt thou not from this time cry to me my father thou art the guide of my youth will he reserve his anger forever will he keep it to the end behold thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king. Now, Josiah was a king of Judah, not Israel. Israel and Judah had different land areas, different kings, and they even had wars against each other. So when you hear a demon nominational church say, oh, well, Israel and Judah, they're all Jews, uh, you're talking to a deceiver. You know, when a guy goes to Bible college for four years and comes up with a, an answer like that, you know they're a deceiver. They're, ign they're not ignorant. They know exactly what they're te telling people. There's no way you could read the whole Bible and not know that Israel and Judah were two different kingdoms. No, just read the book of Kings. Read the book of Chronicles. Read Jeremiah. You know, they're deceivers. I have absolutely zero respect for these pastors, so-called. I have a feeling the Lord's going to say to a lot of them on his left hand, depart from me, ye wicked. Yeah, but that's not my call. Verse 6, Jeremiah 3 and verse 6. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king. Josiah was a good king of Judah. He's saying, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, After she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Verse 8. Here's the punchline. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God divorced Israel. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. See, God says that Israel's treacherous sister was Judah. They're sisters. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. That's why left, lay on your left side Ezekiel for Israel and Judah on the right side. Because God did not divorce Judah. Reason being, um, God made a promise to King David that there, he would always have a man to sit upon the throne of his line. And God doesn't break his promises. 
Our people might break the covenant, but God doesn't break the covenant. God doesn't do that. Verse 9. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. So Israel was bad. Israel got divorced. But as bad as Israel was, she was more justified than Judah. Yeah. Verse 12. Go and proclaim these words toward the north. See, Israel was north of Judah. And say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. And I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And this is not Zionism or Zionists. Zionism and Zionists are basically into Satanism. Some of them know it and some of them don't. Verse 15. And I will give you pastors, you know, like ministers. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Chapter 31, verse 31. Jeremiah. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord that I will make a new covenant, not a renewed covenant like the Hebrew roots liars try to make you think. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You know, the Hebrew roots people want you to think, oh, it's just a renewed covenant. God's going to give it a second chance, you know. You got an old worn out car and just because you redo the brakes and put new battery in it and change the oil, that's still an old car. That's not a new car. It's a, you know, it's not a renewed car. You know, you could take an old car and you could put a new engine in it, but it's not a new car. It's the same old car. Yeah, I know about all this stuff because I'm in the ministry stuff. I actually despise these Hebrew roots people. They're deceivers. It sounds plausible on the surface. And I'm not talking about those that are following this stuff because they're misled. I'm talking about the leaders. They know exactly what they're doing. You know, people like Perry Stone and what have you. Those people, they know what they're doing. Believe me, they know. You know, you don't get popular on YouTube and television by preaching what Jesus taught. What would Jesus do? No, no. What What did Jesus do? He took a, a, a scourge of cords, a whip, and he beat the money changers out of the temple. That's what Jesus did. And they got mad about it. And he flipped over the tables and overthrew the money and drove the animals out of the temple. Those that bought and sold. That's what Jesus did. Your, 
your Hebrew roots people want to want to reinstitute all that. Unbelievable. They're enemies of the cross of Christ. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. They're not the same. House of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Israel broke the covenant, not the Lord. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. See, the Hebrew roots people want the law written in stone. The new covenant wants the law written in your heart. They want circumcision of the flesh. God wants circumcision of the spirit. Circumcise your heart. Big difference. They don't know the difference. They really don't. You know, the Bible says that uh, those that are led of the spirit, there is no law. There is no law to those that are led of the spirit. Those that are truly born of the Spirit, there is no law. And that's in the writings of Paul in Galatians 5 and verse 22. And you'll find the Hebrew roots people hate Paul. Absolutely hate Paul because he shreds their lies to pieces. So they got to deny Paul. Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. What did Jesus say with the two commandments? Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On this two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. But we don't want two laws. We want the Ten Commandments. And then they'll tell you, oh, well, we got to keep circumcision. And we got to keep the Sabbath. And we got to keep these laws and that laws. They're a bunch of liars and hypocrites. What does the Bible say to do with witches and sodomites? Oh, they don't want to talk about that. Yeah, they don't want to talk about that. Oh, they're not keeping Torah. When they start uh, doing what the Bible says to do with sodomites and witches, then we'll talk about keeping Torah. But until then, they're a bunch of liars and hypocrites. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit." Yeah, but I want to keep I want to keep all the Sabbath laws and all the six hundred and something laws. Well, go for it. And if you break one, you've broken them all. So let's go back to this, uh, let's see. Jeremiah thirty one thirty three. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. And no, God's not going to have Alzheimer's and not be able to remember your sins, but uh, probably something like a memory wipe on the computer, right? So, let's go back 
Ezekiel 4. Yeah, we were doing Ezekiel 4. Verse 6. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Therefore, thou shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and thine arm shall be uncovered, and thou shalt prophesy against it. And behold, I will lay bands upon thee, and thou shalt not turn thee from one side to another till thou hast ended the days of thy siege. Now remember, the Assyrians uh, took northern Israel captive, and then years, years later, the Babylonians took uh, Jerusalem captive. Verse 9. Uh, this is where they get the, uh, have you ever heard of Ezekiel bread? This is where they get it, right here. Verse 9. Take thou also unto thee wheat and barley, and beans and lentils and millet and fitches, and put them in one vessel, and make thee bread thereof, according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon thy side, three hundred and ninety days shalt thou eat thereof. Let you know a little secret. I took nutrition in um, medical training in a medical type school. And if you're going to be a vegetarian, one of the first things you have to learn is if you eat a grain, you have to eat beans with it or, you know, peas or peanuts or something, you know, legumes, um, because they are a grain like corn or wheat or barley uh, are just, or rice. Those are grains. They are not a complete protein. They lack certain amino acids. However, if you eat beans, uh, they are also generally an incomplete protein by themselves. However, the amino acids that the beans lack, the grains have. And the amino acids that the grains lack, the beans have. So when you eat them together, and they've got to be eaten in the same time together, uh, they make up a complete protein. Generally, it's a low to medium quality protein. Uh, probably the most high quality protein you could eat is fish, to my knowledge. But uh, the way everything's polluted, I don't think, I don't know if anything's healthy anymore. So, so Ezekiel bread, wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and fitches. Yeah, he's making a bread here that's a complete protein. And uh, matter of fact, there was a doctor, should tell you this whole story. There was a doctor that married a Christian woman, but he was a kind of like an atheist. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he said, well, you know, I'm a man of science. I'm going to prove to my wife that the Bible's wrong. Because he knew that there was health and dietary laws in the Bible. He says, I'm going to prove this wrong. So he started looking into the Bible, you know, uh, quarantine. And by the way, you don't quarantine healthy people. You quarantine sick people. And then he looked at this uh, nutritional law here. And then he looked into the Levitical laws uh, about the clean and unclean meats. And it took him like, I think like seven years. And before he, well, before he got done with it all, he said, you know what? He says, I went into this looking at the Bible as an atheist. But when I got done, I was a firm believer. Whoever wrote this Bible 
had a very, very vast knowledge of scientific principles. He says the health and dietary laws, he says there's a valid scientific reason behind every single one of them. And he says we couldn't even prove all this true except for maybe the last 50 to 70 years. They didn't even have the science technology to prove the Bible true for the health and uh, dietary laws unless, you know, the last 50 to 70 years. He became a staunch believer. He wrote a book. I had it. Unfortunately, I gave it away. I wish I still had it, but... Yeah. That was one of the first books I read. So... Verse 10. So, Ezekiel's told to make some bread with uh, grains and beans. A complete protein, right? Matter of fact, there's a company that makes a uh, Ezekiel bread. Verse 10. And thy meat, which thou shalt eat, shall be by weight 20 shekels a day. From time to time shalt thou eat it. I think a shekel was about half an ounce. Half an ounce to an ounce. I don't know. So you figure he his uh, bread that he's allowed to eat is like 10 to 20 ounces a day. Verse 11. Thou shalt drink also water by measure, the sixth part of an hen. From time to time shalt thou drink. And thou shalt eat eat it as barley cakes and thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out of man in their sight. Uh, that sounds pretty disgusting if you ask me. It has to be, it's got to be something to do with uh, the siege. They had nothing else to cook with. Uh, and they use uh, cow patties, if you catch my drift, you know, the what comes out of the backside of the cow, once it's dried, it burns. I don't imagine uh, if you baked with something like that, I imagine it would have a somewhat disagreeable flavor, if you ask me. But uh, I've never used cow patties, but they do in Africa. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me, right? So... And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. Now the word Gentiles means nations. Sometimes it means uh, the heathens. Sometimes it talks about the children of Israel. It just means nations. Modern day usage, they'll try to tell you it's you know, just means non-Jew. In this case, it means non-Israelite. But not in all instances. Verse 14. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, my soul hath not been polluted, for from my youth, even up till now, have I not eaten of that which dieth of itself, or is torn in pieces, neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. Then he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure, and with astonishment. Uh, the staff of bread. They're talking about famine here. Verse 17. That they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. Um, something I noticed with uh, Jeremiah and probably holds true with Ezekiel too, they're not in chronological order. Sometimes it's 
during the captivity and then sometimes talking before the captivity. Uh, I actually, I'm the reading this, I think this was actually during the siege. That's what it sounds like. Like the Babylonians had not taken Judah, uh, Jerusalem yet. That's just my guess. So, you know, that's why he was laying on his left side and on his right side. And, you know, you know he has his bread and his uh, bread and his beans. But, yeah, there's actually a company that makes Ezekiel bread. And they've been around for a long time, uh, at least since the early 70s. Because I remember uh, my best friends growing up in Miami owned a the second health food store in Miami. And that lady, let me tell you something. She, that's all she did was she'd read two or three uh, books a day on research. There was a lot of people that would come to her store that doctors had told them, oh, you got six months to live. And they would go to her, tell them their problem. She'd give them uh what to do as far as health related stuff to do there are people come back and told you know because i used to work for her occasionally stocking shelves and stuff and uh people would say yeah this woman saved my life you know the doctor would have killed me but you know and then the patients would go talk to the doctor and say, hey, uh, you told me I was going to die, but this lady gave me, you know, vitamins and minerals and this and that and the other and told me to eat this and not, don't eat that. And what would the doctor do? He'd call the Food and Drug Administration and have them go down there and send agents and say, we're going to arrest you for practicing medicine without a license. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the kind of garbage. Instead of a doctor trying to learn how to heal people, he was going to get, you know, get throw her in prison. Yeah, and I was how old? I was probably in my young teens learning about all this. Yeah. Yeah, I learned my lessons in life at a very young age. I found, and then uh, later I found out who owned the drug companies. So, uh, yeah, you think about that next time uh, doctors uh, want to give you their medicine. Yeah. I'm telling you, I really, this lady, this lady knew what she was doing. I wish they were still alive, but they're not. Um, a matter of fact, they lived in Denmark. They were from Denmark, from Copenhagen, their capital. And uh, they lived during World War II. They were in their late 20s or early 30s uh, during World War II when the Nazis invaded Denmark and uh, occupied it. And they told me absolutely that uh, when the Germans occupied Denmark, their occupation was absolutely brutal i've had people tell me oh hitler was a christian no he wasn't i knew several people that lived during that time period had lived through that and they absolutely told me the germans were horrible to those people absolutely horrible and denmark had nothing to do with uh Denmark had never really fought Germany, not in World War I. Or any, you know, they were friendly, and they tried to be neutral, but uh, it didn't work out. The only two neutral countries in uh, uh, Europe in World War II was uh, Sweden and Switzerland. And uh, Switzerland had so many mountains that the Germans would have had a hard time conquering it. So they had to give the Germans passage through their uh, country 
you know they didn't really want to but you know Germany could have cut off their oil so <laughs> it was a bad situation but these people told me that the brute Nazi occupation was brutal matter of fact they were in the uh, he was in the underground fighting against the Germans then at the end of the war, they applied to come to the United States because they said they wanted to get the hell away from Germany. Said two wars in, uh, you know, like 25 years was enough for them. That's that's what they said. They said, well, I wanted to get the hell away from the Germans. Tell you what, they didn't like the Germans after that. Which, Yeah. Sort of like politicians that we have, right? So, all right, well, yeah. That's kind of how some of the stuff I learned growing up as a young teen in the uh, early 70s. So, yep, I knew, I knew quite a few people that had experienced World War II including my father, who was a World War II combat vet. So, all right, well, that's enough. Of, you know, this is the end of uh, Ezekiel chapter 4. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.